Welcome to Here for the Health of the Podcast. I'm Dr. Randy here with Dr. Tom, as always, and we have a great guest today. We have Shiana Rivers. Thanks for being on. Thanks for Welcome having Welcome to the show. Uh, so your your business and your kind of what you do is pro- you probably are, will be better at explaining that than me. So, yes. so give us give us the rundown <laughs> about what you do. Um, so I label myself as a multidimensional healer. My start was with massage therapy. So that gave me an understanding of the full body and our approach to healing. <clears throat> and then I was introduced to Reiki during that class. So that was 2011. And then in 2017, I took up a Reiki class, started doing Reiki with my clients, with their massages. And then I noticed the transformation that they were having. And I was like, okay, there's something about this. Like I need to explore it some more. And um, then I started doing Reiki more and more often with my clients. And I became aware that our bodies were just like physical manifestations of what was happening emotionally. So it changed my whole approach to healing. Um, And then I started doing, I I say I Reiki all the things. So I I even sent Reiki to this before we got here today, because you can send Reiki to events, you can send it to people, you can send it to... Reiki, all the things. And um, then I started teaching Reiki just like I took up a Reiki class um, in 2020, just before the pandemic happened. I became a Reiki teacher February 2020. And then I was like, oh, of course. So I've been teaching Reiki and I essentially teach the healing things. I teach the, the occult information. I teach the mystical aspects of the healing journey. Wow. So the massage, it's you did like all the classes, everything, and then started doing that. Did you like that? Yeah. Um, so massage was like my my gateway, I guess. And so the things that came after that were very much just kind of a natural progression of the journey. But um, you decided you didn't like touching people. Well, that wasn't like even Dr. It. <laughs> Tom. Dr. Tom's been through that. Too. I realized that. That wasn't even it. Like I don't mind. And the thing is, because even now, it's not like my. I'm really good at it, and it's not like my go to go to. Like when I say who I am, it's like I can do so much more than just massage. Got it. Um, and then the massage part is just you know it's just one little pinch of what what needs to be addressed. So then. Maybe explain what Reiki is. Reiki. Because I Reiki. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard <laughs> Reiki. Reiki. Uh, because I've heard, I hear about it a lot mm-hmm. and I know a lot of people do it. Mm-hmm. I even have somebody who does it over the phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he said every whatever, every second Wednesday night or every Wednesday night he has a phone call. Mm-hmm. They do it over the phone mm-hmm. and he's like, it works amazing. So mm-hmm. he, he sticks with it. So I but that was the first time I've heard of it being over being done over the phone. Usually yeah. when I hear about it, it's in a, like a, you know, it's like a massage therapist mm-hmm. who's doing it and has all the additional training and then does it in a room with them. one mm-hmm. So I've done, um, so Reiki has like no boundaries as far as how you can treat people. Let me not say no boundaries. That seemed really loose <laughs> and um, irresponsible. <laughs> um, but Reiki transcends time and space. So you can address healing or like I said, I even sent Reiki to this interview before we got here and Reiki essentially just pours in positive energy to the experience. So um, I began with, yes, like hands on healing with Reiki, but then that also evolved to doing virtual sessions and um, remote sessions. So I don't necessarily have to be on the phone, but a lot of times if I have a remote session, we schedule the appointment. And then from there, it's very much, um, we have a time that's set for the appointment. I send you a healing frequency playlist based on what, what's going on with your life. And then from whatever time the appointment is to like 30 minutes after I send the healing in that session and I'm not on the phone, we get off the phone. You have that own, you have your own experience with that on your end. And I tell you what's happening on my end, but for the 30 minutes, I'm sending this energy healing to you and people after they have this experience, you know, they, we, we discuss what happened throughout the session and the stories line up. You know, I say like, I felt a lot of pain in my chest or something. And they're like, oh yeah, I've been grieving the death of my grandmother. Or, um, you know, maybe like I feel my stomach doing things and they're like, yeah, I've been holding some emotions in that I haven't released yet. So you feel their emotions? Oftentimes, yes. Wow. Does that ever make you sick? Like, no. how do you keep it I know, that sounds terrible to me. No, because I know, um, because I know that that's a part of it. 
And that's also something that I discovered with the massaging. Like I didn't realize, and it, it even made me think, how long have I had this gift? You know right. what I mean? Like how long have I been able, cause I call it, it's clear, clear sentience where you can feel what other people are experiencing. And I'm, I like that it's a strength because it helps me know what to address on clients, but also because I have that awareness, it lets me know that's not yours. Like, you know, cause even going into this, I had some, some feelings on me that I was like, these aren't mine. Like who? Oh God, tell us about this. <laughs> Um, Is but your I had, throat bothering you? Because mine's been bothering me. No, but um, oh. I do get that a lot with whenever I'm working with people, they have this, because um, even healers in particular have this particular thing with their throat chakras. They're not communicating enough. They're not expressing their own mm -hmm. needs or their desires. But before I got here, the vibe I got was one or both, I'm not sure who, um, is holding on to something emotionally that they're not, they're, they haven't had a chance to release. Mm -hmm. That's good. I had a lot of stress on the way here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. It was probably the most stressed I've been in a okay, while. Okay. Okay. So we found this. Um, it was like a foreclosure home, mm -hmm. and it was so it was full of junk. Mm -hmm. So I was on the phone with the guy who's going to come and just clear all the stuff out of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking around just like looking at what's in there, and I just put like a few things, older stuff, in a bucket. And then I get back out to my truck, and I look at one, and it, it looks like it's a in fully intact live missile. <laughs> from 1940. So I'm, I'm like, okay. So I put it in my truck. He called oh, me. Okay. So I call it. So I call Tom. To, I'm like, I don't know what to do with it. He's like, ah, I don't think it'll break. And then I was like, no problem. So then I, I text my grandpa and, he, and they're like kind of joking about, they're like, oh, no, I call him. So then I send it and then he, and then he texts me back. He's like, wait, that thing might be live. Don't, don't get <laughs> right. in a car accident. Don't, like, don't hit a bomb. Don't car. do any of this stuff. And I was like, oh man. Um, so I was stressed, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you then I called some, but then famous. I called someone who I knew would know what he was talking mm -hmm. about. And he said it, it would be a live one, but it, or it would be a real one, but it was probably a dud, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. a, so. No, this, that anyway. wasn't the vibe I got from this. This is that something. Was a different type mm -hmm. of stress. This is okay. a different stress. Mm -hmm. That was the stress. So, mm -hmm. well, so for me, my wife passed away in 2020. Mm -hmm. And so people always say like, I, I generally, I guess through the process, she started a nonprofit called Spread Joy mm -hmm. that made me focus more on joy mm -hmm. than any of the like what she went through and the grief of that. And and to me, it was looked at like it helped me and my son move through it quickly, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We're like, there's still stuff. Um, and this is like September's joy month. So it's like always this is the time of year where we kind of rethink about that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't, and I did some counseling, but I don't know if I, like, how do you know you move past it officially, if that makes sense? Because that, maybe that's what you're I don't think you ever feeling. officially move past it. You just learn your mechanisms and how to process it. Right. Because there's still, you know, grief is tricky that way. And there's times that it's like, oh, an anniversary is coming up. Am I supposed to feel this way? Because the right. anniversary is coming up. But then there's like, it's a Tuesday 9 a.m. and you're boohooing and you're like, where where'd this right, even right, come right, from? Right. So well, what do you think of just burying it deep? Like 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 I think anything <laughs> what sad. Burying it deep? Well, I think anything sad, what's or painful or traumatic or any any event that people go through, whether it's losing a loved one or or whatever it may be. Tra oh, uh, sexual trauma. Burying it. Burying it deep. Mm -hmm. Is that what I said? What did I, I say? I thought it was burying. Yeah, I thought oh, you were bearing. like, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, like shovel, dig it in the ground yeah. and like. That makes sense. Like never, because I, I never really understood why continue to, if you don't have to continue to process it, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Why not move on to and focus on like the good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is and that like No, a, like I am a huge advocate for like focusing on the good because that's, that's what alchemy is, right? It's transforming yeah. what you went through to something lighter and to something more efficient and you know like a nicer way of looking at it yeah yeah um so no we all need to do that in some shape form or fashion but it's also like not negating what took place right and having that be a part of your story right is there like a cleansing or something that the body like you you would take somebody through to release that if they're struggling with it and how do you know if they're struggling with it like i generally don't think i do mm -hmm. to be honest um well i feel like because 
what you do for a living, you're a healer as well. Mm -hmm. So you're already, again, that alchemy process, you're already transmuting a lot of people's pain. So that helps you feel better about yourself too. Um, But in saying that, like a lot of what I work with are clients that have grief, um, you know, whether it's from a a, the loss of a loved one or I often like to say grief is just like a loss. It could be the loss of an identity. It can be the loss of a loved one. It could be the loss of a dream. Relationship. Yeah, relationship. It's just a loss. Yeah. So when people are grieving, um, they're experiencing heart chakra blockages. And a lot of times, even when we as healers, we do our work so well and stuff, but we don't address our hearts because we're so used to taking care of other people, our hearts get ignored. Right. Um, so what I do with Reiki is when I'm working on, cause I address all of the energy centers, we have seven energy centers or chakras as some people like to call them, but the heart center in particular for grief, heart and solar plexus. So that is your, like your chest and your stomach area, yeah. which I mentioned stomach stuff mm-hmm. on the way here. Um, but that's what's holding on to a lot of those emotions that, once they are treated with energy healing, they're able to express them or release them. Because sometimes it's just, they're just, like you mentioned, buried so deep down inside that they just need some, like a nudge to help bring them out. Right. Do you find that that everybody has stuff, of course, and that you could talk? Or, or when did you know it was a gift versus like, maybe I'm just BSing this person to pull something out from like second grade that really wasn't that big of a thing, but they can identify to it because you've, you know, you've mentioned, you know, whatever that they connect to. Um, it's, it's still like, there's still days that I'm like, is this, is it real? Is it yeah, not? Is yeah, it, yeah. 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 We curse on here. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. There's some days that I'm like, is this bullshit? Mm-hmm. But then it's like, no, it's not. It really is. It's, it almost feels so surreal more often than not, because it feels like this pretend thing that I've made up and I'm like, nah, I don't know about this, but then I'm, I'm sharing it with people and they're like, no, 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 this is what came to me. Or like sometimes on my end, I feel things on my body that they're experiencing, but they have, you know, this whole visual experience with their eyes closed. And they're like, you know, my grandmother visited me or, you know, I felt swirly sensations going down my body the whole time. Or, you know, like it's always different. Every session is different. Every experience is different. So I'm like, okay, it is real. Like, yeah. I didn't just make it up. I'm not quite sure I understand what Reiki is still. It's energy from one person to another person that's getting rid of blockages. It's energy from a higher source. Okay. So source energy. Um, and it's me helping transmute that energy from a pure positive light to helping. I'm kind of like the battery, you know? So it so, goes through, so it does go through you? Yes. Or? I'm like just channeling the energy. Okay. Um, but so I'm like detached from the, I'm, not the experience, but I'm detached from, like you said, it could be stressful that I'm carrying onto that. Um, no, I'm just, I'm the, the battery in between. So it's, it's energy healing that helps heal what we don't visibly see because, you know, there's just so much we don't see and there's so much that happens with healing that isn't necessarily happening physically, you know, and Reiki healing helps heal on a cellular level. So I even tell people whenever they come in for a session, you know, look to see what happens within three weeks from today, because it's not just what takes place in your session today. Gotcha. So, so could it be called the secular version of prayer? Yes. Or I like to say it's, um, it's like prayer on steroids. Okay. Because you're connected. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Or like, a, or, you know, if people are like, yeah, I do pray and stuff. I'm like, well, I got like a direct line. Like. Like the Pope. Yeah. Well, I, don't <laughs> wanna, I don't wanna put myself in that well, category. Well, because I, I would say in the prayer world, like you would also have a direct line. Mm-hmm. That, so, because that's where, I guess from my background, like I've seen prayer really work. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And it would be the same idea of mm-hmm. you're, you're praying to God mm-hmm. and for someone else, they don't necessarily need to be there. They don't need right. to be, even know that you're doing right. it, but you you see it being right. answered and you see things happening that sh- quote unquote shouldn't be happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I, I guess it would be the same, same thing, right? Is it almost like prayer? Like when you're doing it, is it almost like the same version of prayer? I like to, a lot of what Reiki is, is intention setting. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's what prayer is essentially. It's setting intentions for what you want 
out of out of the prayer, out of um, the end result. And Reiki is no different. So we're setting intentions to clear these blockages, to remove this grief, to remove this pain, the, to remove this suffering, whatever the case may be. Nice. Now let's talk dimensions. So would you agree we have more than five senses? Like I kind of think we've only defined five senses, but then outside of that, we got antennas that like like dogs, for example, are are or animals, I think, are hearing and seeing things that we just don't hear or see because ours are limited in that. What else do you think's out there? I don't think ours are limited in that. I think our belief is that they're limited and that we just don't necessarily own how much we are capable of. Um, there's absolutely so much. I mean, you can go for a walk and you see bugs, you see right. insects. There's so much going on that we don't see happening down there. And they're moving with, like you mentioned, they're moving with these other senses of theirs, whether it's vibration or it's, you know, right. this inner knowing or telepathic communication, whatever the case may be. But we have these gifts ourselves. We yeah. just have to practice them to make them stronger. Is that like your intuition? Like when you walk in a room and you're like, something's not right. Mm -hmm. Like that to me is some sort of sense or Absolutely. like energy field mm -hmm. or, or whatever. That's why when people say trust your gut, it really is. And that's when I mentioned when people come to me for healing, our emotions are stored in our gut. So if we have so many emotions we're not addressing, or if we have really poor gut health, how can we trust our gut? Right. Or how can we follow those nudges? Yeah. What do you think of ghosts and like souls? Like, are they present? Like, cause you were mentioned you feel people, but there are people that speak to souls. Mm -hmm. Like clair is that clairvoyant or, or I don't know what the terminology is. Um, those are like mediums. Mediums, mm -hmm. yeah, mediums. What is that in this same realm that there are spirits, if you will, just kind of around and you might feel that energy? Mm -hmm. You're into that too? I am. Nice. Um, I don't personally, like I, then the, the spirit world knows like, eh, I'm good on that. Like, I don't want to see ghosts. You come, you I don't, don't want to mess with them. Yeah. Either. I don't want to, I'm good on that. Um, I know people and like some of my friends call me like the spiritual plug because there's a lot that I'm like, I'm not going to delve into that. But like, if I know somebody, you know, if you need, if you need some channeling, if you need to go yeah. talk to a, the death or a loved one that has yeah. passed on over time or whatever, I know those people. And how do you know if they're good? Because I guess that's the other, with Reiki, with any of this stuff, I and I know that li listeners probably think we're nuts. I love this stuff, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like it's a, it's a field or a, a world that I'm just into, mm -hmm. whether it's sounds or energy or chakras or any mm -hmm. of this stuff, but I never know where to look and to know. Because it's hidden, isn't it? Right. <laughs> but well, it's not. Right. You just got to look for it. And I guess like that, maybe I need to, like, how do I tune into, I, I mean, and maybe we are, like, we're attract, I think we're attracting a lot more of this in our, in our podcast and, and world <laughs> right. of people that, um, um, just that you, like, I just want to make sure that when we reference, go to somebody to do Reiki, that they're not somebody who maybe just started and is, has no, like, they're saying that they're certified or whatever. Because I, I guess we don't, as a culture, understand the process of learning it. Mm -hmm. And and is it a learned thing or is it a gift? So a little bit of both, I think. I think um, a lot of the clients that come to me that want to learn Reiki, they've already tuned in to knowing they have some sort of gift or they feel things and they just want more control of it, right? Mm -hmm. So even you, you have an interest in these things, but it's like you want more of an understanding of it. I right. felt for me, Reiki helped bring more awareness and understanding and even like safety about the things, right? Because then you have this, this tool that you can use to help work through that world. And um, as far as like learning who it, who can provide it and how people can teach it effectively, uh, there is a process. There's, you need to see a Reiki master teacher, which I am by the way. Nice. Um, I have a class in November, but beautiful. Um, this isn't something you can learn on YouTube. I know YouTube has these different right. whatever. No, you need a Reiki attunement from a Reiki teacher. And an attunement process is just basically the, the transference of the energy so that you can provide it to others as well. And you can do self Reiki treatments too. Nice. So like there, you're not, there's no like books that you necessarily recommend. It's always, it's always kind of finding the guru or the person, right? 
I mean, there's plenty of books on it. You can definitely read books about it, but reading the books isn't going to teach you how to use it. I mean, it'll teach you, but you have to have an attunement to be able to offer it. What and like, what do you think of using like chemicals like ayahuasca or do you do? I think somebody said you do cacao um, or is that somebody else? That is somebody else. I have done cacao. I'm big into all the plant. Let me not say all the plant medicines. I'm big into a lot of plant medicines. I am a huge um, advocate for psilocybin and cannabis is what I preach about all the time. And what do you think that does? That ju- Does that just open our eyes to these other dimensions? Along with all kinds of other things like um, mushrooms, for instance, magic mushrooms, psilocybin, however you want to address it, uh, they essentially help us see things differently because psilocybin helps create new neural pathways in the brain. So for people that are experiencing ADHD, OCD, anxiety, PTSD, like all of those things, they help you see a different way. They, they help you see other options. They help you say, Oh, like it doesn't have to be done this way. Or they even make you more comfortable with what is happening right now. So instead of, you know, modern medicine likes to brush it to the side or put a Band-Aid on it, I think magic mushrooms help you say, oh, this is what's going on. This is what needs to be done to repair it. Or, you know, this is okay that you're right. here. Do you know anybody around this area that you recommend for, like, if somebody wants a plant medicine experience? Mm-hmm. I trips it. What is it? I trips it. I take people on journeys. Oh, you Oh, you do it? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> um where I just hold space for people that are um, experiencing, you know, whatever they may have processed, like, again, grief, or it's usually grief, honestly, Mm -hmm. um, or they're just stuck, whatever stuck means to a lot of people. And um, I hold space for them while they experience a psilocybin journey. Now, when you say you hold space, are we talking outer space? Or it may be out space. of space. I'm holding space, just like like just wherever it is. Yeah, it's, it's standing still. Yeah, um, I'm have... just I'm present so that they're not going through it alone. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Your I'm, mind is blown. I have Yay. so many questions. I know. About Listen, all the many questions. I feel like we need a. We're gonna need three episodes. We need a long time. <laughs> it is so, a lot. Well, so my first question is going back to the census thing that we so like a dog can hear a whistle that we can't hear, mm-hmm. but it sounds like you you were saying if we were if a person got really in tune to their senses, they could hear a dog whistle. Bingo. Yeah. Or not even necessarily hear a dog whistle, but hear what we typically don't hear. So like for me, for instance, you know, as I started getting stronger with my gifts, um, cause I used to have crazy dreams growing up, right? Yeah. You probably did too. I was wondering point. about dreams. Yep. Yeah. Like you probably had crazy dreams and then you start making these connections and it's like, Oh, were these dreams or like prophetic visions? You know, and then you're like, oh, am I crazy for thinking that way? But it's like, no, we just weren't taught how to process these things or how to honor or um, cultivate these gifts of ours. So like Wi-Fi, let's use that as an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If a person was tuned in, they could walk into a place and know if the Wi-Fi was on or off. And if I could be unplugging to. it or plugging it in and they would be able to say like, oh, the Wi-Fi is back on. Maybe. The Wi-Fi is off. Maybe. I don't, I, I wouldn't address it for like technology things per se, but um, energetically things. There's, you can walk into a space and say, uh, like the vibes it's are not, off. Yeah. Like you already know. That's, well, that's the hard part. Like he was kind of alluding to it. There's no objective way of knowing if a person's like gifted and good at it versus f- just full of it and is charismatic and good at saying the right things at the right time. Well, I think discernment is, you know, important in any healing modality. And just like, you know, there's certain patients that don't want to come to you guys, but there's certain patients that are drawn to you, right? And it's the same for any practitioner, whether it's Reiki, whether it's a therapist, um, whatever guru you want to label, whatever the case, you have to have discernment and you have to know who your people are. Yeah. What do you think? Let's talk about some diseases real quick, like anxiety. What's your take on anxiety for those that are out there that just have like crazy anxiety? What 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 do you recommend they do? For or, and where does it come from? Maybe a lot of it is just you know we're we're spiraling these thoughts, and anxiety is just a spiral 
of thoughts that just keep spiraling, right? And we're not taught how to like pause the thoughts. Right. So meditation for sure, that's a start. I mean, I'd say at the end of every podcast episode, be sure to meditate and hydrate. So some of, a lot of our problems can be addressed with proper hydration and stillness. And I don't think, you know, modern America pushes that nearly enough because they want productivity. They want results. They want movement. They want right. money. Right. And stillness and hydration aren't providing those. Like that's and, right. Well, and even some of the things that you're saying, it sounds it like in the Christian world, it sounds like you're kind of turned off to the Christian world a little bit or the not, po- or I don't know what the. I'm turned off by organized <laughs> religion. You said the Pope. Well, because when you well, said the Pope before, she gave a face well. like, oh, don't even bring up the Pope. Uh, but it's not because in like the Christian world and circles, it's like what you're saying is exactly what happens. It would just be you pray to God instead of higher. Was it higher source? Is that what you called it? I mean, I pray to God. Pray, okay. Yeah. But I so also talk be, to my higher self. Okay. Um, and I also communicate with guides and ancestors of the light. Okay. So that would be like saints and angels. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yes. That, well, exactly. That's, that's what I mean. Like there's like all the things that you're saying about like meditate, read the Bible in the morning, pray on your own, pray for others. No, but <laughs> I'm not saying that you do, but I would say like that's general mm-hmm. Christian teachings is mm-hmm. like you need to be still and you mm-hmm. need to read the Bible and you need to pray in quiet time on your own and mm-hmm. you need to pray for others. And um, things happen outside of the realm of what you know, which is answered prayers. Yep. So it's, it's, I hear a lot of the same exact same things. It's just slightly different versions of mm-hmm. it. Like in the Catholic world, I know that they, or I, I don't know, I think they pray to priests. No. Do they pray uh, or, or saints? Saints. 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 They pray mm-hmm. to saints. My yeah. mom's Catholic. Is she? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there, so it's like, there's, it's, it's a little bit like religion. I don't know if vibes is the right word. Would you agree with that? I like to tell people you can have spirituality without religion, but you can't have religion without spirituality. So a lot of what I teach is the spiritual aspects of things. Like you said, it's the stillness, it's the prayer. It is, it's very much communicating with yourself and communicating with a higher power. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times um, religion takes the power of you in it out. Does that make sense? Okay. Mm-hmm. They they put a lot of power on these other people in within the community, mm-hmm. and it makes you think that you don't have these own powers yourself. Oh, interesting. Okay. Gotcha. What did your mom think of you? Or all this? It was a journey. It <laughs> yeah. was a journey for sure. Um, when I first started, especially because I can um, – Like I said, I like to Reiki all the things. So oftentimes I show people that I can Reiki their water, um, which which like changes the flavor or texture, temperature. What? Mm -hmm. And uh, I can Reiki your water if you want. I want you to. (laughs) It's good when I have like a like a side by side to make it sciencey, you know. Right, right. Um, But I want to even through metal, like doesn't matter. Doesn't Doesn't matter. matter. Transcends time and space. Transcends time and space. Gotta listen. (laughs) I mean, I get it, but it's (laughs) what? Yes. Yes. Tap water is best if you have it available. Here we go. This is great. You didn't know we were doing science. I love a good experiment. Okay, good. So when I first started like doing Reiki water for her, because, you know, she was very, very, very Catholic. And when I first started massage, she was like, okay, this is cool, whatever. And then when I started this Reiki journey, she was like, I don't know about that. Right. And whenever I did Reiki her water, she was like, and she's very British too. So she's like, are you a witch? She's (laughs) British. No way. (laughs) I was like, oh, here we go. Because even that label has so many, right. you know, like. Right. And I was like, I mean, I pray to God. I talk to the angels. And she's like, okay. And there's a lot of mysticism in the Catholic religion. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, yeah. It makes sense. This yeah. tracks. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. So um, have you seen the, and I don't know if this is Reiki or not, but where a person's lying down and then the the healer comes over top of them and just is waving their hands around the body and then doing like twists and like throwing things and, mm-hmm. and they're never touching the person mm-hmm. um and then sometimes the person their body's shaken mm-hmm. and like thrusting and mm-hmm. doing all kinds of stuff tell us about that like how does that work what what is that what's so going on some of it on? some of it is reiki some of it's um i just we can say there's so many different energy healing modalities 
Um, and some of that's like plucking is what it sounded like you're talking about. They're just kind of plucking yeah, energy. Yeah, I've seen that. Yep. Um, but I mean, I've had experiences with clients where their their muscles are twitching or they're just kind of jumping. Um, I've had clients that had to immediately use the bathroom when they got off the table. I've had clients boohoo cry. I've had, I mean, there's just, you never, all, right. every session is different. So you really never know what you're going to get in each session. Wow. That, and so you could use it for good or could you, a person also use it for bad? You can only use it for good. So you, so if giving good intentions to a person helps them, mm -hmm. giving bad intentions to a person. Like that's voodoo dolls and stuff, right? Is there See, the black voodoo, magic? Voodoo is even like, you know, its own thing too, because I think a lot of people have this, a lot of misinformation about voodoo because mm -hmm. any of these practices, there's like good and evil, right? Right. Um, and even for those terms, like I, I don't use, I don't like to use the words good and bad because like it's a spectrum, isn't it? Right. And when we say good and bad, it places judgment on it. Yep. Well, there would be some things that are objectively bad. Yes, absolutely. But, but again, discernment. And, yes. Yeah. There's that one story where they talk about the, the, I, th I think it was like a Chinese farmer who his horse ran away yeah, and everybody was like, that. oh, that's, that's so terrible for you. Yep. I know. And he's like, up. and, and. He's, he's like, well, we'll see. And then, the, then, then the boy goes to look for the horse and comes back and breaks his leg. And everyone's like, oh, that's so terrible that your boy broke his leg. And he's like, yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. And then they had a big war and a military draft and the boy didn't end up having to go because his leg was mm -hmm. broken. And they were like, oh, that's so good for you. And then he's, the farmer's like, well, we'll see. Mm -hmm. And the point was that some things, you don't know if they're going to be good or Absolutely. bad things until, until later, yeah. really. And it's about um, a lot of what I teach and again, going back to your anxiety thing, it's about understanding the ebbs and flows of all of that, because there's going to be the ups and downs each time. Mm -hmm. And I think we get so caught up in our heads that we're like, oh, it needs to be good all the time. And it's like, yeah, that's not realistic, though. But we yeah. just need to know how to navigate both. Yeah. Do you feel like you can see the future sometimes? I don't. Or like, would you say your other self or higher self is in the future? Or, or maybe, maybe not necessarily in the future, but maybe um, aware of all of the timelines happening simultaneously. So, like, there's moments that I Randy's <laughs> lost. Holy smokes, <laughs> that one got me. No. <laughs> well, because, guys, brain's not big enough for this. <laughs> if if all we have is the present, right? Even when we're praying, even when we're setting intentions, all we have is the present. And when I tell people to manifest their desires to write that shit down, write down what you want. Yep. You're writing it down in the present tense, right? And you can look back at these manifestations months, years, whatever later, and they've happened. 100%. But and which is mind blowing when you write things down, how often they come true yep. is mind blowing mm -hmm. every time. Every and time. I find it so hard even sometimes to convince somebody to write it down. Mm -hmm. They'll say, they'll say, oh, I know exactly what I want. Okay, write it down. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. I won't do that. Or I'll do it later. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to think about it and do it later. And it mm -hmm. just drives me crazy because the moment you write it down, it, it seems like it happens. Yeah. It's so, the only way he landed his wife. He wrote, <laughs> he literally wrote it I down. literally, Congratulations. and I wrote down ridiculous things mm -hmm. and every single one. But did you write those for the future or did you write it like you already had those qualities mm, good in somebody? Point. I'm, I'm wondering about that. How you like do affirmations or vision mm -hmm. statements. Yeah. The point. It, so it was, it was my ideal woman is, right. and then I had a list of 80 things right? and it was like what, what her birth order is and what her hair color is and all like all these different components. Birth order. Yeah. That is very specific. Yeah. Well, I, because stuff. first, so I just read a couple of books that said firstborns get along best with lastborns oh. and lastborns with, and everybody gets along with middleborns. So okay. there's just birth, like a firstborn, the parent, and I even see it in my kids where you're just so extreme, making sure they do everything right and you're mm -hmm. all over them. And then mm -hmm. by the time they're a lastborn, you just, you don't I'm even know where they, you couldn't tell. yeah, you don't, you don't even know where they are half <laughs> the time. And, and most of the time it's their siblings. They're in taking another care dimension. <laughs> Possibly. If they're in Capricorn, they're okay though. Cause they, they were here already. Cap I, someone just told me that Mercury's in retrograde. It's now out of retrograde. Oh, we're out of retrograde now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Wait, do you study all that stuff too? I do. All right. We got to talk Astrology, about Astrology, human design. So what's this? Like I'm Sagittarius. Okay. And, and You're a Sagittarius and, sun. Let's get specific because there's there's several layers to this. All right. What's that mean? What's Sagittarius sun mean? So. Oh, like like a male. A male. No, no, no. S-U-N. Oh. Oh. 
Because we have all aspects of the zodiac within us. Uh, so you have okay. the sun, the moon, you have all of the planets within your chart. Okay, good. So you're a Sagittarius sun. So what I get from that is you are very philosophical. You're mm. a student. Um, you Handsome. Probably, <laughs> that's not in there. Oh. That's not in that list. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you are, but that's not in the list. <laughs> that's not in the list. Um, you probably like to travel yep. and you're just open to new ideas and exploring new ideas. Yep. That's very Sagittarian qualities. Yep. The downside things mm. with Sagittarius things. Also, like I have a Sagittarius stell stellium, which is three or more placements in mm. your chart in that sign. So I resonate with a lot of Sagittarian qualities. Um, but knowing this, I had a relative that was or is a Sag. And when I first met him, I was like, Ugh! like, yeah, like always I always felt like I was butting heads. Like he always knew everything. I have a handful of people like that for sure. And I was like, why does he know everything? But then I was like, oh, my gosh, I have a lot of those same qualities. Mm -hmm. um, but so Sagittarians, because they explore, because they're the philosophical philosopher, because they're the student they're they are always learning. But also like there's this kind of know it all tendency yeah. with them yep. sometimes 100 percent. what do you think i am i'm not sure air sign is what i'm getting air sign i'm fire sign okay I think. all right fire no. sign what's your sign or well, sign? what's your birthday a um i'm an aries a okay birthday. no that tracks too though that's a fire sign right mm -hmm. yeah oh. not fire sign. Fire? fire sign mm -hmm. yeah buddy mm -hmm. fire means like that's that you're sign. what does fire mean that you're so when explosive? we look at the elements and sometimes um, when we look at the elements interacting, fire is very, it can be impulsive. Aries is known for impulsivity. Um, fire can be impulsive, but it can also be, um, you know, it's it can be passionate. It can be whatever emotion. It can just be a lot of that, right? That's, which I, so that's one area that I have a hard time because I'm not impulsive. I'm almost the opposite of impulsive. And so when we look at charts, it you might have a moon that balances that out, right? Because if we look at the whole chart, it might be, your sun is this, but your moon helps balance that. So for me, for instance, I'm Capricorn sun. So this is that grounded energy, very like you feel safe in my presence. You feel like kind of stillness. But then I have my rising sign. My ascendant is cancer. So that's the nurturer. That's the uh, the mother figure. That's the maternal lovingness. Yeah. Um, and that balance, I like to say, makes me a compassionate asshole. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then I have my moon, which is like your subconscious and your emotions, and that's in Leo, so that's fiery. Yeah. So we kind of have a com we have a combination of everything. Mm -hmm. Everybody, yeah, everybody. Exactly. Everybody has a combination of everything. Everybody. Which is almost why you can make a generalized statement, and it, and it can apply exactly. to anything. But once you learn other qualities, like for instance, your Mercury, which is how you communicate. Um, I've even said like I would love if I had or when I have my empire more built. Um, you know, to understand people's mercuries so that you understand how they communicate with each other. So my mercury is where your placement is. So my mercury is in Sagittarius, yeah. which is makes sense with what I study, what I communicate, what I teach. It's very like, let me study all the things. Let me be the philosopher in these practices. And is, that, is this, do you understand that? Yeah. Mercury, you know what mercury well, well, I don't know said, what Mercury. I don't when know. I, I didn't say know what Mercury that, was said, in retrograde. I have no clue. She said what it's that how means. you communicate. Mm -hmm. This is the so, planet of communication, so that's why it affects technology and travel and communication. Okay, there is something I will say. The full moon thing. Mm -hmm. I never thought it was real until I started in practice, and there would be days where, and most days are just perfectly normal. I I know exactly what I'm going to do. People are coming in, out. Everything's exactly as planned. And then there's some days where my staff are like on the verge of tears mm -hmm. and people are acting wild. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is going on? And I just go home. And then after a couple of times, um, I, yeah, someone yeah. said it's a full moon. And I was like, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. I, I would never have believed it unless I had no clue there was a full moon, mm -hmm. except for every time I just go home and be like, people are wild mm -hmm. today. Yeah. So I would even say, well, from now on, like start looking at when it's a new moon and a full moon and, and see what that looks like with the patients coming in. Because I know for me, when it's a new moon, I don't really get much sleep. Like my sleep is challenged. Right. Um, I don't necessarily need as much sleep, but I don't sleep and I just feel like, oh, well, here we are. And then I see it's a new moon. But when it's a full moon, I get more sleep. Um, but then there's other people that get no sleep at a full moon. Right. Side note, do you think we landed on the moon? Yeah. 
Like gun to your head. Uh, Gun to your head. You have to choose. Okay. Good. Great. No. Um, so birth (laughs) chart. Is the moon is is the moon that we know of as the moon one of the moons? I'm not sure about that because I feel like um, and I had this conversation with somebody recently, if there is extraterrestrial life, like what is Earth in their zodiac chart? You know, Mm -hmm. what is our moon in their zodiac placement? Well, you know what's interesting to me is the flat earthers have some, there's some logic to some of the things that they're saying. In other words, science is saying we're a ball in space traveling millions of miles an hour, yet the astrology doesn't change. Right. So that's kind of weird. Like the North Star literally is in the exact spot all the time. And then based on um, the rotation, you will see the uh, Big Dipper. And that shouldn't be the case because they're dating this all the way back to like the Egyptians and Mm -hmm. thousands of years. Mm -hmm. So like in the short run, I could see how it'd be like, oh yeah, you're going to see the same stars. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, that's something... They got something there, mm-hmm. right? Just like when you see the pyramids and they're shaped right. to match up Orion's belt. And I heard something with like the pyramids and the chakras. There's something with the shape of the pyramids and how they set it up. It matches with the chakras mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the third eye and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yep. And even like when you think of, um, I mean, there's so many different symbolism things that kind of crisscross now right. with chakras, energy centers, even the, um, I can't think of the name of the symbol on medical, on like ambulance and oh, yeah, outside yeah, of, yeah, I, know what you're I mean, that's about. all with the serpent. Yep. It's all, it all crisscrosses. It's all the same right. references. Right. So with the birth chart stuff, is that what it's called? Like your birth your chart or natal chart. And what you do is you take, what, what things do you need to know about a person? So like the date they're born, the year they're born, is there anything else or just that in and of self, you can put together a full, um, uh, I don't know what, I guess, Report personality, reading. yeah, reading or um, if they have their time of birth, then you can get more specific, but you can get some information with just their birth time or with just their birth date. And okay, um, because like I can, there's an app that I even have, I can pull up people's moons from knowing their birthday, gotcha. Um, okay, but the more specific, the better. And then people knowing that, how, how do they make that useful to their life? Like the diehard, um, horoscope people or whatever, like, is there anything that once they know who they are or how they operate that w- they could apply to their day to day? That's like, Oh yeah, I'm glad I know that the um, mercury or cancer moon or whatever. Mm-hmm, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, for instance, like I, I have a Leo moon. So Leo moons are very creative and childlike behavior. And, um, they also can put on a show or be dramatic. So when I know that about myself, I look to see when the moon is going to be in Leo for the month because the moon changes every two to two and a half days each day or each month. Yeah. Um, so I would even say like those moments that you're like, oh, the moon is full. Look to even see where the moon placement is that time because, you know, there might be more intense emotions. You think I might be causing the chaos. No, no, no. Yeah. The oh. moon. The moon. So oh. like right now the moon is in Scorpio. And Scorpio energy can be very taboo things, very mysterious. And like, look at what we're discussing. Yeah. Yeah. And with, so if you know that you might perform better on certain days. Absolutely. Like, so if you're scheduling a race, for example, like a run and mm-hmm. you're like, well, it's going to be, I need to do it in this time period. Cause I'm going to perform a heck of a lot better. Mm-hmm. Really? That might be why you suck at golf. You just t- <laughs> that's moons true. Are I have we're I playing had, at the wrong. I had like a year where I was great at <laughs> the wrong moon. Um, all right, I got this. So with the mainstream healthcare system, I want your thoughts on that in general. Just like, what do you think? It's terrible. Yeah, it's ter- and my start. So I know I started with massage therapy in 2011, but before massage therapy, I used to work in the ER. So even when you oh, mentioned no the full moon stuff, mm-hmm. before I was even into understanding moon cycles. I knew just like you knew when the paramedics were crazy in there, when we were getting lots of labor and delivery clients, when psychiatric admissions were up, the moon is full. Um, But it also made me learn so much about like how insurance is just a shit show and how insurance almost wants to be there to like, how can we not pay these people? Um, And it made me more aware of even like, 
a lot of those that are in those fields, like physicians, nurses, they don't take the medicine. Right. You know, like they're they're administering it, but they don't take it themselves. Yep. So like, what does that say about that healthcare system? They're coming to chiropractors. You need, yeah. You know, right. I've had yeah, I've had medical doctors who they got adjusted and their family got adjusted, but they would never refer someone out to it. Mm-hmm. So they would they would give the drugs to a patient and then take their whole family to go do something different. Right. Yeah. And then you said it was their job. It's compartmentalized into yeah. saying, this is my job. This is within my scope. This is what I do. It's not necessarily what I personally do. It's just what I'm trained to do or mm-hmm. hired to do, I guess. Yeah. No, my understanding is that we can heal ourselves. We just need, we need the tools and the foundations. And some of it is you know, just learning what our bodies are capable of. And I think modern medicine disconnects that from us. Right. And it makes us reliant on that. Whereas like we have, again, these powers within ourselves, we just need to tap into them. Right. And that's what I feel like the struggle for me is, is that because we've all grown up in a world where it just, that is the authority, if you will, in what they call healthcare. But it's the more you learn, the less it's like, how do you open up somebody's eyes to like, that is not healthcare. Mm-hmm. I don't meet anybody. It's like, I want more things cut out of me or I, I don't want, I, I don't meet people that are like, I want more medications. Mm-hmm. So why is that? Like, what do you think it's going to take for us to change the, um, the, I guess the attitude and the, and the mindset of people? Um, a lot of it is just, I think, living in it ourselves. And I think the more we live in it ourselves and share that aspect, just like you said, you're getting more and more people on this show that are in these other. And I think the more that we share, like, this is how I'm living, the the more people are saying, oh, like, let me try that out because they just don't know. Right. They don't know different. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of it is just conditioning. You get sick, you need to go see a doctor. And that's not necessarily the case. But that's what we've been conditioned to believe. And I almost feel like they feel offended sometimes. Mm Mm-hmm. Because they spent so much time like learning and it's been the authority that like, if you say anything outside of that bubble, like we're the, we're, we're crazy, Mm -hmm. which I'm not saying we aren't. I mean, there's a little bit of crazy in everybody, but yeah, but they're not, what I found is they're just not open to it. Like Mm -hmm. it's a very quick shutdown Mm -hmm. of anything. Whereas I just like to hear, like, I'm fine hearing anything. Tell Mm -hmm. me about this drug Mm -hmm. that that's great. And then. Let me ask a couple of questions and then let me hear how you respond to those and then we can kind of make decisions, right? And I think that everybody should just have that choice. And I'm with you. Like, I think all healing comes from the mind mm-hmm. and then you attract in anything that you need physically. Absolutely. So once you get the mind and energy right, you're going to attract in, I need to exercise or, or I meet a person that I work out or, or I need to eat this certain food. Mm-hmm. You, you just, you really start to know the body. And you even look at, um, you know, a lot of the movies that have been made over time with like the hero's journey and they, they come across a guide, right. That helps them. Yep. And then the guide helps them get to the next step. And then like they, they win whatever they've set out to do. Right. But that's what we are essentially. Like we're all, we all have guides and healers can be guides and spiritual healers can be guides, like manual physical healers can be guides, whatever the case, but we all have these journeys that we do need guides along the way. Are there any parts of Colombia where you just stay away from because the energy you pick up on is just bad? Um, or there, places? I don't know if you want to. I don't know if you want to say them, but there is a um, there is like a botanica or apothecary that I I guess you could call it that, like an herbalism shop that like doesn't give me great vibes, mm-hmm. and it's not far from me. And I would rather drive 20 minutes to like Northeast to go okay. visit that space than this other one. But some people love that space. Like they, they flock to this space. But for me, I'm like, it feels like the energy feels heavy. Cause again, I don't like good and bad, but it feels very dense, very yeah. heavy. And, um, and it makes me feel not as safe in that area as I do in the other area. Gotcha. I rake you this water. By okay. The way. Yeah. So, so, so what do we do? do- so try that one. Okay. Take a sip of taste, texture, temperature. Do you want me to drink out of this one first? No, no, no. <laughs> Definitely not. Go ahead. And then try the other one. A little bit different taste. Now, I don't know if this is just me playing games here. You, all right, you do it. What, what's the difference in the it taste? It felt softer. Uh-huh. Is that right? I could agree with that. Like it's, it's softened, mm-hmm. which means I'm going to absorb it better. 
Which have you seen those? There's those Japanese studies where they freeze the crystals after they like pray over yep. them, put words or, or speak positive yes. words to them. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's kind of like is that that's what you're yeah. doing. So th they didn't, or maybe you guys that are watching it, but she while just while we were talking, just did some Reiki over two cups of water, just or one over cup. one cup of water, mm -hmm. and then we had a a, a tester here. Um, to so see, then what so. I like to say is, if our bodies are mostly made of water, right, and you tasted the difference in that, imagine what takes place in our bodies with this kind of healing. Right. I like that. So what are sessions? So what's is, a session? I think I would drink if I was going to choose one. I would take something. You want to rake Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and yeah, and that's the the wild part is like, I have one of the, I have a, I have a whole house water filter, but mm -hmm. then I also bought this Mayu, we call it uh, poetry water for Mayu Angelou. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all it does is it spins it and it tastes significantly different mm -hmm. than the than if I just get my regular filtered water. So mm -hmm. like nothing changed except just motion mm -hmm. and maybe my belief of like this is going to make it better, mm -hmm. which I love. Um, but no, I've I obviously have like filtered water that I use, but you know sometimes you need to renew the filter or change it up or whatever. And I'm like, well, in the meantime, let me just reiki it, and it it tastes better. And I even right. had a client who has spent lots of time in like, you know the Swiss Alps and, and all of that. And I was like, taste this water. And she was like, it tastes like spring water. Like, cause right. I, again, would tap water and then you Reiki it. And she's like, this ta it tastes like spring water. Nice. Do you do inner child work? And, and what does that, what is that? I guess. Um, a lot of what I do can address inner child healing. Yes. Um, and a lot of that is very much, again, when we discuss like seeing future or present tense and all of that, like, if we look at the timelines is all happening right now and all we have is the present, um, Reiki again transcends time and space. So if there are things that happen, traumas or you know, moments in time where you were a child that you think need addressing with healing, then we can send healing to that time with Reiki. Well, and say you were an infant though. Mm -hmm. Like say you don't even you have no recollection. Is there a way to scan somebody and just be like, yeah, there's some stuff that like maybe mom and dad were fighting or whatever, getting a, your you know mom was getting abused while you were an infant and have mm -hmm. no clue. Um, I, I don't necessarily do scanning for that, but sometimes like if I'm treating a client that might come up, like they might gotcha. have a flash of it or they might have an understanding of it. There's also even been clients that I send to um, people for myofascial release, I'm sure you're familiar yes. with. And that addresses trauma to the tissues, right? So right. even when they call you in, they're like, they go back way, way, way back. Like, what was your birth like? You know, and like for me, I had an umbilical cord caught around my throat. So it's like, you know, yeah. you're probably going to have difficulties with expressing yourself over the time period that you have on this journey. Gotcha. All right, nice. You yeah. still processing yeah, I, things over here? I, well, no, I was just thinking. <laughs> uh, we talked a few episodes ago. We talked about like the Fifty Ch Shades of Gray stuff and mm -hmm. how like. I had no clue growing up that that was even a thing. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I hear like there it's one of the best sellers ever and everyone's mm -hmm. into spanking and choking and mm -hmm. all these different things. So then I started thinking, well, maybe an umbilical cord around the neck makes you want to get roughed want, up. Yeah. No. Or a anything, traumatic man. birth makes that or more do you think appealing. the opposite? Maybe. The opposite. It's very much like, do not constrict this for me. Like I need to use my voice. Gotcha. Um, but I think, you know, the restriction of that made me feel very much like I don't need to be restricted in sharing my voice. But if other people have that kind of experience, you know, they might have that belief throughout the years, like their voice isn't important or they don't need to be heard. So those babies that just launch out of mom real easy, they're just the wild ones later, mm -hmm. sexually free. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> All the things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> um, now what about, um, I know you're big on words, mm -hmm. like words matter. Mm -hmm. What are some things that people shouldn't say? And then what should they say to replace that? Uh, eliminate, try. Like, yeah. I, like I tried. I agree with that 100%. Eliminate, yeah. try. Or not I tried, but like I'm trying to do this. Or um, even if you're like telling a friend about a plan that you have, like I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this, like take the word try out and what just say Fina? doing. Finna, I'm, I'm finna, finna, finna go. No, it's the same it. because it's very um, still. There's yeah. no action in trying or I'm finna. I'm finna do this. There's right. just stillness there, and you can just say I'm doing this. I'm moving on. To, you know, like speak of the words in action. Um, trying is one. Also, um, what about negative? Like can't, won't. 
don't or don't. Um, like I can't do that or that's impossible. If you, if you say you can't, then you won't. Right. You know, like if, if you say it's impossible, then it is. Um, it's very much we create our own reality. So, you know, speak what you want to happen. If, yep. if you can't do something, you absolutely won't be able to do it. But right. even if you don't see, you know, as like we said before, the future of what that looks like, you have to start speaking it as if it's already happening for it to happen. Yep. I, yeah, it drives me crazy when people say, I can't do that, or I'm terrible at that, mm-hmm. or it's just some negative thing that mm-hmm. makes no sense. And then they find, of course, they're having issues with it because they keep telling themselves over and over and over that they have issues with mm-hmm. it. It's no surprise. Mm-hmm. Or like, I'm not a morning person. I'm not a, you're not going to be a morning person as long as you keep making that your identity. Right. I keep telling myself I'm a Leo. <laughs> 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 what would being what a Leo ha- make happen? I think they're aren't they stronger? Are they? I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't actually. But I think so. I, I thought someone told me that a Leo was stronger. Not necessarily. Oh. Uh, now, what was what's the wildest thing you've seen heal? Like this, somebody you maybe worked on, and either remote or in person, that you were like, "Wow, that's." I've seen a few. Um, I know for one, I worked on a horse, and I think that that was a transformative experience because a lot of what I do, people can't see physically. Cause you know, even with chiropractic care, you can do a before and after picture right, and right, see right. the adjustments that have happened. But the work that I do, you can't necessarily see the transformation. Right. Um, but I've seen, I can see the transformation in people's eyes more often than not. Um, if they've had heavy stuff that they've been going through, their eyes get lighter. Um, but for the horse that I worked on, you could physically see the horse kind of surrender like relax Mm -hmm. yeah that's Mm -hmm. cool nice yeah i still have so many i mean we're pretty much out of time but i have so many i have so many questions yeah so so the negative thing that you you can't give negative energy to somebody or you can't use with what the work that i do well think of it as you can steal you can just steal the good which may bring up the bad but somebody could be there and you would get bad energy from them and well, they still have bad energy, or but it's you think they're, they, lack, they're lacking the good energy. So, kind of like darkness and light. So, if a person comes to you and they're lacking the good energy, <laughs> yeah, but you have the good energy. Mm-hmm. I have and, all the good energy, and you know, and this is everybody she knows can the just person. Throw it around. <laughs> well, that's what I'm wondering because you know the person when you, when they come in and you like feel the room is a little different, mm-hmm. and maybe it's and that that's kind of where I'm going with it. Is are they taking good energy from someone else? Mm-mm, just a higher power. So how come you have me feel down when you're around that? Or maybe you don't. I, I don't, but because I know the protect the protection things that I need to do beforehand. So I even tell people, especially for people that are highly sensitive, a lot of what they're experiencing isn't their own. You know, like they they're just like, oh, I just feel like angry or why am I sad all of a sudden? And it's you're having these experiences of other people around you that you don't even necessarily realize you're taking on. Right. So you have to learn these protective mechanisms. Um, you know, I call in peace and protection before I start my day so that like whatever fuckery is afoot, I'm not affected as it, yeah. as a, as much as I could be. That's yeah. good. How important is music? Like what people are mm. listening to, especially kids. Mm-hmm. Um, again, words matter. So what we're consuming really matters and can, affect our livelihoods. You know, I tell my mom, like, you don't need to send me these articles. I'm good. And um, right. I'm big into or the news. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Like, but I'm big into healing frequencies. Um, again, I incorporate those with a lot of my healing work, too, because I do feel that they change us like we're just balls of energy and music and vibrations help restructure the energy within us. Have you seen those rife? I think they're called rife machines. Mm-hmm. Or- where Spooky do you, two is one of them. I kind of, I want one of them. I do too. Where do you get them and how do you know they're right? And then how do you know what frequencies do what? There's a, there's actually a practitioner I worked with that introduced me to the Rife machine years ago. Nice. And um, there's one called the Spooky Two. Spooky and I, Two. Mm-hmm. And they have a whole kit and they even have a list of the healing frequencies for what you're working on. They even have like a colloidal silver Rife machine yeah. for um, infections and stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. I want that. Mm-hmm. That's a, I mean, there's there's it. so much. You're stuff. into it. You're I, like bongos too. Don't I remember you? remember in chiropractic school we had somebody um, bought us these things that changed the it's the sounds or the frequencies are supposed to bring you into like a different state. Mm-hmm. But then they even have you holosync. 
posting. Yeah. yeah. And then they even have you do affirmations, record yourself, put it under, and then they bring it down to a level so you can't actually hear yourself physically saying the affirmations. But mm -hmm. anytime you're listening to it, you're just saying to yourself over and over, I'm healthy, I'm mm -hmm. powerful, mm -hmm. I'm happy, I'm fun, I'm energetic, mm -hmm. I sleep amazing. And it was it was pretty cool to see that the number of people who were using it and even really high performers talking about this worked for me. Like this yeah. is where I was. This is the only change that I made. And now this is helping me. Yeah. And we can do that in our in our everyday lives now, too. Like you can I've had um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Joe Dispenza's work. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he talks about making a mind movie, which is essentially like your own commercial because we're we see commercials all the time. But. You can like I made a, a video for myself. I went on YouTube, found different clips of like this beautiful home and like me on a stage, like talking to a large audience. There's right. different things that you can do with that. Put it into like a compilation video of the things you're manifesting and speak about it. Just like you said, the affirmations that you were doing, speak of those affirmations over the video. And then you can e either watch the video as you're listening to the affirmations you're saying you can razzle dazzle some healing frequencies in there if you want to yeah. as well to add an effect in there. But um, yeah, it's just reprogramming our own minds for what we want. I love it. I want to keep going, but I know we have. <laughs> yeah, we got it. So, Shiana, how do people find you? How do, you know what are some things that that they can uh, or some services and different things that they could reach out to you? Um, I am Shiana everywhere. S H E A N A H. Um, I'm most active on Instagram. I also have a podcast, Who You Call in Holistic. I'll have to have y'all Yeah, we got to hype that up a little mm -hmm. bit. Is it on all the a Spotify and all those? It's everywhere. Yeah, cool. Who You Call in Holistic. Who You Call in Holistic. I like that. Um, where I touch on alternative therapies as well. Sweet. Sweet. All right, great. All right. Thanks for being Thank on. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for having me. Here. We're here for the health of it. For the health of it.